Choyu uh, is the sister peak to Mount Everest. It, it's right next to it. It's 27,000. And Choyu is the sixth highest mountain in the world. I left Wichita at the very end of August, um, flew to Kathmandu, and it takes a couple days to get to Kathmandu. So I was in Kathmandu and met my team and my expedition leader and my Sherpas there in Kathmandu, and we left the following morning and then began the journey up to what ultimately is to become the summit, and it takes about five to six weeks to, to make that journey. And so you're moving up, you hire your yaks, you hire your porters, you hire, you hire everybody that you're going to be moving up your equipment on, because it takes a lot of equipment. And so you slowly make your way up and up and up until you reach a certain elevation, and then you come all the way back down to advanced base camp where you rest and you wait for a window. So once you decide you're going to go, then it becomes a journey up and you're going to stay. You're going to go from, from the, 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 ideally, you're going, to, you're going to leave advanced base camp. You're going to go advanced base camp to camp one, to camp two, to camp three. And then in the middle of the night, you're going to climb. You're going to, you're going to do your summit push. So we're working our way up. We're working our way up. And we finally arrive at camp three. And that's the high camp. That's at about 25,500 and really entering into what they call the death zone. We begin our, our journey up and from, from, uh, from Camp 3 to the summit, we leave at about 1130 at night and begin wor working our way up. And, and it's really good conditions. And I'm going to tell you this, it's 15 below is the temperature and the winds are blowing maybe 30 or 35, which is good climbing conditions. So as we begin to work our way up, we're, we're moving pretty slow. You know, the initial part of that, of that final summit push wasn't too bad. And what was happening to me anyway, and this, it was a critical error on my part, is that, is that my Jumar that I used, I had, I had been using it all the way up, not with my expedition gloves. I'd been using it with some other gloves that I had that were smaller and very easy to use. And so when I got on the line and began working up with my expedition gloves, they were very cumbersome and hard to use, very hard to get into the Jumar. And then there was a guy in front of me that was, that was having trouble getting around the eye screws. So what I was ultimately doing was I was taking my expedition gloves off and I had liners on, these North Face um, liners, which were, which were, which were, were, were pretty good, but at that altitude, probably not good enough. And so what ultimately happened was as I got about halfway up, um, uh, my hands began to freeze. So I finally get to the summit, and you know when you get to the summit because you crest and there is, a, there is Mount Everest. And so you have Mount Everest right there in front of you and Lhotse, which is another 8,000 meter uh, summit to the right of that. And it's a beautiful morning and it's probably 7.30 in the morning and I'm wiped out. I'm extremely tired. And so when I got to the top of Aconcagua down in South America, I remember feeling very elated and emotional up there. And it was just, I just, I just had this great feeling up there. It wasn't the case when, when I got up there. And I'm not exactly sure why, other than I was really exhausted and, um, um, you know, not feeling too well.